Hi there and welcome to the spring series of Sunday Girl. My guest this Sunday is one of my own style icons, the inspirational supermodel Pat Mulcahy. Pat, welcome to Sunday Girl. Thank you so much. So we're joining you in the beautiful setting of the Rosbui. <laughs> I think that's Irish is better than mine. In the beautiful Rose Hotel here in the heart of Tralee, County Kerry. But Pat, I know you're down here for a couple of days or an or because you are such a busy lady. You are one of Ireland's most booked models. Will you tell everyone here a little bit about how you got into modeling and your career to date? It I'd have to go back um, to when I was just 55, so that's maybe 11 years ago now. Um, and I met Emer and Vivian Lockdown Models. Brilliant girls. And Vivian and Emer asked me to do a charity fashion show. And it's something I would not believe I could ever have done because of nerves, lack of confidence, no self-esteem. And eventually uh, they asked me a second time and it was for Age Action Ireland. And I thought I'm 55, so I need maybe to do something for this organization. I might need them at some point in my life. And I went and I did the fashion show and they asked me to sign up from there. Okay. So it was a complete <laughs> surprise. <laughs> so what I love about this story is you were 55 when yes. that happened. Yes. And you know, I think sometimes as we go through life, we feel that at a certain point that it's maybe too, we're too old to pursue our dreams or that we perhaps missed the boat in some respect. But you started your modeling career at 55. And I think that 55, is yeah, inspirational. Yeah. What's incredible is I think in life and as you get older, Orla, you understand that I think what's for you will not pass you by. Mm -hmm. I think that's very mm -hmm. true. Because if I go back to when I was 15, uh, my mother had passed away unexpectedly. I was the oldest of seven children and I became the carer. And I remember that very same year that she passed away, I was with my friend in Patrick Street and was stopped by an agent from an agency in Dublin. Okay. Um, and they wanted to meet my parents and whatever. And I was a shy, extremely shy 15 year old and could not even look this person in the face. I was so embarrassed. And I couldn't go to my dad at that time, I'm talking about 1972, okay. and say this strange person came up to me in the street and would like to meet you in a hotel in Cork at the time, the Victoria. And I remember I got the card from them and we're here until tomorrow, can you get your parents to come in? And even though it was an exciting thing when I thought about it later, that someone asked me to be a model, um, I couldn't go to my dad because it will, he would have been horrified okay. and he was going through bereavement okay. and whatever and you know, mind of seven children and no mum. So it was actually never discussed and he didn't find out for 40 years later. He literally parked that dream for 40 years. Yeah. And, and what yeah. did you do? And tell us just a little bit about your earlier life. Um, so I became overnight, uh, when mum died uh, in May, I did my junior cert would have been three weeks later. And really mum had great hopes for us in the sense that it wasn't just going to be a secondary education. We would be the first of her family to go through college. Um, and that all came to a number sudden abrupt end tragically on the 1st of May 1972. And I overnight became carer to six younger siblings. Unbelievable. Uh, it was a very tough time, Orla, because at the time there was no such thing as counselling. You know, there was um, nobody said, are you OK? It was automatically the done thing. It was your job. You take over and you mind your six siblings. And bear in mind, my baby brother was a year and ten months old and my sister was three and a half. So there were they two were babies in the house. Tiny. Yeah, yeah they, they were, were so young. And, and I he had a huge uh, negative impact, I suppose, on my life as well. Well, I think that you were perhaps robbed of a normal teen childhood. Yes. You know, those normal teen experiences and the support 
and you were thrown into this role of a minder and a carer yeah. Yeah. When, you, when you were still yourself really a child. A child, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until later years I realised how traumatic it was and that mm -hmm. trauma I lived through for many years and fear. And, do you know, I maintained the role of mother, mm -hmm. I suppose, for mm -hmm. my entire life until the last number of years when I had to actually draw a line <laughs> and say, no, like I have a family, I have a husband. If your own family took second now. place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And things had to change eventually. But through counselling, I got huge help. Okay. So I went in at one point with deep depression. Okay. Um, and that would have been sort of in the 90s. I remember Heather was doing her leaving cert. And Heather's your daughter. And one, I have one daughter. We Heather. call her the supermodel. I love Heather. <laughs> love the one and only. Like so. myself, the one and yeah, only. Yeah, the one and only. And I call her my very own Miss World. That's right, your very um, own Miss World. And anyway, I got in. I didn't realise it because this type of thing with depression that people that have had it will know. It creeps up very slowly mm -hmm. and it got to the stage where I realised that for a full year I didn't get dressed. I was in my pyjamas all day. I didn't talk on the phone. I couldn't take phone calls from my friends, family. I avoided social contact and eventually after 12 months I literally fell apart and said I can't live like this anymore. I can't go on like this. It is fixable Orla. And that is that is the message we really I have to get it really, out. So that if somebody is feeling like you were feeling yeah. and if you've described it really well there it is post-traumatic stress syndrome and Absolutely. so many levels yeah. you had a traumatic experience growing up and we didn't talk about those things then so it couldn't yeah. be resolved but these things come back to haunt us. They absolutely and they do. Can be solved yes and, you know you went out there with the help of your GP yes and you got help yeah. and I think it transformed your life I would say to anyone that thinks you know that there's only darkness there's no light there I promise you I promise you if you get the right help there is and take it like I was lucky and of course look you went from darkness into light absolutely and you have entered the modeling world with a, a bang is that the right word it was, i mean it's just been from the moment that i saw you and i know many many people saw you you've had a stellar career and i want to talk about that modeling next. career tell us just a little bit about that career and some of the highlights um oh it's been incredible and I have to say thanks to you because I've worked with you so many times as well and it's always a pleasure. Oh, we love working I, with you. Really, and I have to say, um, a bit, I have to give a shout out if you don't mind, uh, to Mandy Marr. Oh, an sure. amazing agent. Isn't she? An amazing yeah. agent. Uh, I've I saw you on the style counsellors recently. Oh, the style <laughs> counsellors with Suzanne Jackson. One and of the most popular was, shows on TV. Oh my God, it was just a dream. Um, I think one of the bigger dreams as well was getting to work with Gok Wan. That's right. And it was, right. we were absolutely shocked to get to work with Gok Wan. And they started with Emer and Vivian in Cork. And we did, I think, his three shows in I Dublin. That. Many years ago, is that? Do you that? remember? Oh, that's a good few years that's ago. That's a good few years ago. And then he um, booked up with Mandy when he came back a second time, going further up west and Midlands. And uh, he booked me again. So I got did. booked for all the shows did. in Ireland <laughs> and you're thinking like Gok Wan is walking in and saying put Pat in the hat, put Pat in the hat and he's making great fun. You're on you RT know. today. Oh sure, yeah, <laughs> great. It's like my second home and do you know what's brilliant? I now have a bus pass so I can get outside my door, hop on the bus and I'm literally in RT in about 15-20 minutes into the door. I suppose TV like was a major thing yeah. in the sense that did I think in my entire life that you're going on TV? And the greatest gift, I suppose, really, was that my dad, who passed away in 2020 during COVID, the greatest gift that we ever got was that every time I was on, he he'd watch, in. he'd record, the minute I get home off the bus, and he'd ring me to say, oh, I, well, how do you always get the best clothes? <laughs> How do you want, how do they give you the best clothes? You because she best. makes them look the best. And I remember this story. I think he was oh. a little biased. <laughs> I remember we were doing a show on the Ahado about three or four years ago, pre-COVID, and you were wearing a suit by Uma Cutluck. <gasps> oh, yeah. Stunning. Oh, and 
that. We were backstage after the show and this lady and her family had a wedding coming up and they had traveled down from Dublin for the show to see could they get inspiration yes. and what to wear. Yes. And I remember the lady coming in and she was a quiet, lovely lady with her daughters and they had seen you in the suit, in the suit. <laughs> well. and they literally wanted to buy it off your back <laughs> and i remember having to ring on who was up in the bedroom at the time and say you got to come down here because they want to buy the suit off this lady's back and <laughs> see pat that's what you have and in like. the modeling world our job is to sell clothes and to sell dreams Absolutely. and to inspire yes and when you go out there whether it be tv on the runway in campaigns you sell the clothes, but you also sell a bit of a dream to people as well, because you say to them, here I am, here is the age I am. Yes. And, you know, you too can look this great. And, you know, it's not even about that, but I think that because to me, I'm an imposter. I'm actually not a model. Just for everybody to know. I think there. everybody successful like I'm that has the imposter <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> And I never see yeah. myself as a model, honestly. Yeah. What I am is a real person. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm a real person. I'm not mm -hmm. super tall. I'd be five, six, five, I think I'm shrinking, actually. I was five, seven. I think I'm shrinking slowly but surely. <laughs> but sure, we'll go with that. That's okay. But I really think that people, especially when it comes to TV, you have a certain target audience watching that particular program. Mm -hmm. You may not have all 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. And it's great for them to be able to relate mm -hmm. to a person and say, she's not a size zero. Mm -hmm. She's not 19, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you're relatable. You're relatable. Yeah. yeah, I think she's relatable, but inspirational as well. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you, Orla. Pat, and tell me, if you had advice for somebody um, thinking of entering the modeling industry or indeed fulfilling a dream. Yes. What would you say to them? Any dream. Well, first of all, like I never believed this could be possible, but I think that that, that sense of confidence, first of all, comes with age. If only I had the confidence I had when I was in my fifties, you know, going back. So I'm begging people, women, don't leave it too late because you have no idea what's ahead of you. It is, achievable any of your dreams i mean with a grand page i get a lot of messages from women maybe 45 50 plus and to me they're so young <laughs> like i'm old and they're so young and they're asking me for advice about you know the fashion industry makeup hair clothing and it's got, they they're becoming so interested you remember long ago when somebody was 70 they were like an old old woman i remember long ago when somebody was 50 and yes you know i mean when i was growing up a woman my age and a woman your age pat we'd be wearing dark clothes probably dark you know clothes. we'd be kind of staying yeah. a little bit in the shadows yeah where thankfully that has changed that i mean has... could we be more out there than I we mean, are so women <laughs> out there that have feel they've missed an opportunity, but also because they don't have maybe friends with the same interest mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they don't have a sister with the same interest. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually seriously thinking that we need to set up some kind of a fashion club mm -hmm. for people 50 plus mm -hmm. that if you're on your own, you know, you can come together, send me a message. We'll organize an evening or a night out at some fashion event and get people to come together. Because it's a lot idea. of people. So this <laughs> space, we're going to share Pat's Instagram hashtag here or tag here. Thank you. So watch this space. When this lady says something's going to happen, it happens. It happens. Pat, thank you so much yeah, for pleasure, sharing your story, for being an inspiration to me and to so many. And thank you. Both Pat and I look forward to meeting you sometime, and we wish you an amazing week. Mm.